Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another holiday recipes video. I am so excited because this year I did budget friendly holiday recipes. Now normally for the holidays I do like to splurge a little bit more, you know what I mean? But this year, in this economy guys, we're still keeping it budget friendly even in the holidays. Now the good news is all of these are still so delicious. I cannot wait for you to try these recipes. I'm gonna show you three recipes today and I feel like this would be the perfect holiday dinner. So definitely have your friends over or cook for your family and show them that vegan food can be absolutely delicious and also budget friendly. So all the recipes will be on my website and they'll be linked down below. So definitely, definitely check that out. I'm also gonna leave a playlist link down below with all of my other vegan holiday recipes. So if you guys are ready, let's get started with the deliciousness. Okay. Guys, for this Christmas season, we are all going to make a vegan corn casserole. I would describe this as a mixture of sweet and savory, and it's kind of like cornbread, but it's also like pudding. Oh my God, it was so good. I was very obsessed with how this turned out, so you have to make this, especially if you love cornbread and if you like joy. First, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and into a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add the dry ingredients. I'm using all-purpose flour, cornmeal, white sugar, baking powder, and salt. I believe you all have most of these in your kitchen. Whisk that together to combine. Now, while you're doing that, you can actually heat a nonstick pan on medium-high heat. And once that's heated, let's add in some vegan butter. And we're gonna cook diced onions in the vegan butter. Mmm, I know, so delicious. Now, you can probably do this with a vegetable oil in instead of vegan butter, which would be cheaper. And I think it'd still be delicious, but I do think vegan butter adds a lot more flavor. And nowadays I can get a pretty big tub of vegan butter for pretty cheap. So hopefully you can too. If not, use a neutral flavored vegetable oil, such as canola oil. Cook the onions for a few minutes until softened and you get that delicious ooh la la scent. Then you can turn off the heat. Now you're gonna quickly mix in some dairy-free plain yogurt or dairy-free sour cream. You can even make your own guys, okay? I do want to do an experiment making my own vegan sour cream with tofu. I don't think I've done that yet. Maybe I have like a few years ago. I don't know, but that's on my list. But for now, we're just using store-bought dairy-free plain yogurt, which to me tastes like sour cream as well. Now into the dry ingredients, we're gonna add a can of cream style corn and a drained can of whole kernel corn. Make sure you're not draining the creamed corn, okay? But do drain the whole corn. And add in the creamy onion mixture and mix this really well and it should look something like this. Then we're gonna take a casserole dish. I'm using this good old Betty Crocker one that I got from the dollar store, mm-hmm. And I'm gonna pour in the entire mixture. Now it's time to bake it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. The finished product should be slightly browned at the top and still quite creamy, moist, and kind of pudding-like in the inside. It's nice and savory, yet sweet at the same time. And honestly, guys, I am obsessed. I love cornbread, but I might love this corn casserole more. I've seen some people put cheese on top before baking, and you can definitely do that with vegan shredded cheese, but I left that out to keep this more affordable and simple, and I definitely don't think it's missing anything without the vegan cheese. So guys, try this at home. Home. It's simple, it's decadent, it's delicious, and perfect for the holidays. All right, guys, now you can't go through the holidays without making at least one vegan roast. That is the rule. I did not make this up. I'm such a big fan of vegan roasts or loaves, whatever you want to call it, okay? It's basically the main sort of meat replacement centerpiece to a holiday dinner table, but it's not really trying to be meat, which is why I love it so much. And this year, I decided to go budget-friendly, gluten-free, and nut-free. Free. Yes, guys, we're gonna make a nut-free, gluten-free lentil roast. Let's get started. First, we're using dry green or brown lentils. I first rinsed my lentils, then I added the lentils and water and crumbled vegetable bouillon cube into a pot and brought this to a boil. Now, you can just use lentils and veggie stock. It's basically the same thing. Once it comes to a boil, you can cover and then turn the heat down to a low and then boil on low for about 30 to 35 minutes or until the lentils are cooked and all water is absorbed. There can still be a little moisture left, but not too much. And set it aside to cool for about 10 to 15 minutes and that should also soak up the rest of the moisture into the lentils. And while your lentils are cooking, you can start preparing your flax eggs by adding in ground flax seeds and water into a bowl and mixing this well. Set this aside and this is going to gelatinize and become a 
all gooey, okay? And at this point, we can prepare our veggies. I'm using the classics for a roast, guys. We're starting with onion and celery, which I diced finely. And we're also going to add some mushrooms, which again, I diced. And we're also going to grate some carrots. For the carrots, I'm using a food processor because it's just so much easier, okay? Now, you could probably just grate everything, like all the veggies in a food processor, but I wanted to keep some of the textures. So I just kind of only grated the carrots but yes you can definitely just you know use the food processor for all the veggies now once you have the carrots grated and all the veggies prepared don't put the food processor away because we're gonna be using it again in just a little bit at this point we might want to preheat our oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit while we do the next steps i say this because i always forget to preheat my oven and i'm sure i'm not the only one so go right now and preheat your oven now let's heat some oil on a non-stick pan and add some minced garlic which i already have on hand because if you watch my videos you know about my garlic hack which i will link down below which is a video about cooking hacks for lazy people that's going to be linked below now we're going to cook the garlic along with the prepared onion celery mushrooms and carrots let's cook this for about three to five minutes just until it's nicely cooked and most of the moisture is gone then let's add in our spices i'm going to be using garlic powder onion powder thyme and smoked paprika or you can just use regular paprika Add this into the veggie mixture and I'm also going to add in some salt at this stage and mix this well and now we can turn the heat off and set this aside. Let's now go back to the food processor and add in some rolled oats to create oat flour. If you're gluten free, make sure you use gluten free oats and I like to keep some of the oats unblended and blend some of them. I've laid out the measurements in my blog post link below so check that out. Then we can just put the blended and unblended oats into a bowl and set that aside. Now, once the lentils are cooked, we're gonna add roughly around half the cooked lentils into the food processor once again to mash the lentils. I like to keep some of the lentils unmashed because it adds more texture, so I highly recommend that. And finally, we can add everything together in a large mixing bowl. Let's add in our unmashed lentils, then our mashed lentils, the cooked veggie mix, the rolled oats and oat flour, and let's not forget our flax egg that we made in the very beginning. And now we just mix everything together until it is very well combined. Then into a loaf dish, a loaf pan or casserole dish, I'm going to line it with some parchment paper so that it's easier to clean and also take out the loaf. I'd recommend doing that, but you can also just grease your dish as well. It's up to you. And we're going to add in our mixture and I like to pack it down so that it comes together. And then I kind of roughly cover it up with the rest of the parchment paper and I bake it in the oven for around 45 to 50 minutes. Once again, at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now guys, the next part is going to be optional. You can decide to make a vegan gravy to go with this roast, which I absolutely love, or you can make a glaze. I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy glaze. We're simply going to mix together three ingredients, barbecue sauce, ketchup, and maple syrup, or you can use agave nectar. That's it. And you can also use balsamic vinegar instead of barbecue sauce if you have that on hand. Now here's another optional thing. You can actually glaze the roast at the very end once it's out of the oven Oven, which is what I did here. I basically took the roast out after about 10 minutes of cooling and I flipped it upside down using the parchment paper and then onto a plate. Then I just glaze the top. But what a lot of people do and what I do sometimes is I take the loaf out of the oven after about 40 to 45 minutes of cooking when it's almost done and then I glaze the top and I put it back in the oven for another five to 10 minutes. Whichever method you do, it doesn't really matter. Either way, I would recommend making double the glaze and keeping half of it on the side so people can enjoy themselves with more glaze if they wish. Before you start cutting this up though, let it cool for at least 10-15 minutes so that it's less likely to fall apart because it comes together more as you let it cool. And that's basically it guys. I know that the roast is a bit of extra work. It's definitely not a super lazy dish, but for the holidays, it is something special that you can make and it works as the perfect main dish to any holiday dinner. And I find that whether or not someone is vegan, they always enjoy a nice vegan roast. Plus, this year's version is extra budget friendly, like I mentioned, yet it's still so delicious. If you guys want a nut roast recipe, which is also super delicious, I'll link that down below as well. Guys, I have a confession.
question. I was actually gonna make some baked potatoes for this final recipe, but I realized as I was about to film that I did not have the right potatoes, which I thought I did. So baked potatoes might be for a different video, but I had to think on my feet and I decided to make some potato nachos using my air fryer and I'm actually very obsessed with it. And if you don't have an air fryer, don't worry because you can make this in the oven as well. If you're using an oven, go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So for these potato nachos, I'm using these baby gold potatoes. I think they're called that, I don't know, mini potatoes. They were sitting in my fridge, not getting any love guys. So I rinsed them and I cut them into very thin slices, around a quarter of an inch or maybe even thinner. And you can probably use any other type of potato to be honest, preferably small ones, but big white potato nachos could also be very fun too. Now we're gonna add the sliced potatoes into a mixing bowl and coat with vegetable oil. And I like to give it a good mix just to make sure it's very well coated with oil. And now I'm gonna add some salt, some garlic powder, and also smoked paprika. But the paprika is optional, and you can feel free to add any other spices you'd like as well. Now I'm gonna add these into my air fryer tray, so I'm trying to separate them as best as I can, but they don't have to be perfectly not touching, okay? They can be gently touching, just not laying on top of each other, you know? Then I'm going to air fry these bad boys at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for around 15 to 20 minutes total. Yes, we're gonna flip them halfway just to evenly cook them. So what I would do is start with 10 minutes at 400 degrees then do a little flip and do another five minutes and then see how you like it from there and see how many minutes you can add now if you're using an oven you can lay these out on a lined baking sheet and bake these for around 30 minutes or again until you reach your desired consistency and again don't forget to flip them halfway so that they are evenly cooked and while the potatoes are cooking in the oven or the air fryer, this is when you can start preparing your toppings. And as they say, guys, the world is your oyster. Honestly, what does that even mean? I still don't know. But the toppings you use is totally up to you. I decided to make an impromptu pico de gallo okay uh, with just some diced tomato diced red onion and some lime juice and a little salt okay I'm gonna mix this together in a bowl and set that aside if it were up to me I would have also added some cilantro but I did not have that on hand and for another topping I decided to add some vegan cheddar cheese yes I know that vegan cheese is quite expensive so if you prefer to make your own cheese sauce rather than buying a meltable cheese I actually have a pourable cheese sauce recipe which is budget-friendly I believe which I will link below as well if you're using the meltable cheese like I am once the air fryer is done with potatoes you can lay out some parchment paper on the air fryer tray and add around half the cooked potatoes and then top with half the grated cheese and then add another layer of the potatoes and top with the rest of the cheese okay we're gonna air fry again for another five minutes or so at 350 degrees or just until the cheese melts now in the oven you can do basically the same just lay it out you know layer it and then I would turn the heat down to like 375 or 350 add back in the oven Oven with the cheese for another five minutes or until the cheese has melted I'm sure you understand the concept okay now if you're using a pourable cheese you don't have to do that step of course you can just layer your toppings and potatoes as you need onto a serving plate it's very easy and I would serve the pourable cheese on the side okay just to prevent any sogginess but it's up to you if you want to just pour it on top pour it on top now we've got this lovely layered potato nachos as you can see here it looks delicious already and now I'm going to add in some black beans as another topping and I'm gonna add some of the pico de gallo mixture if you can call this pico de gallo and I'm gonna add some on the side okay because I feel like it's like a lot to put on top you can just serve some on the side and I also added in some green onions and that's basically it you can also serve this with a side of vegan sour cream and of course like I said you can feel free to just go wild with the toppings maybe you can make some more Christmassy toppings to go with the potato nachos these were so good so good so addictive and I think they'd be a massive hit who doesn't love some crispy potatoes all right you guys so that is the budget friendly holiday recipes video I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you try all of them out because I'm telling you they are so good okay once again all the recipes will be on my website and they'll be linked down below so definitely check that out if you want to make any of these make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe for more budget friendly and easy vegan recipes and definitely check out my holiday recipes playlist which will be linked down below as well so happy holidays guys, I hope you try these out, I hope you enjoy them, and I'll see you guys in my next video, bye!